Y'all know what? I think I'm having an allergic reaction to this show. I promise you, I'm not even joking. I watched the episode and immediately started itching. Like, look at this. Like, you probably can't see it. Like, I'm breaking out of my arm, behind my ears. It's itchy and red. My face all around my hairline is itchy. I haven't put any products in my hair. I don't put heat on my hair or anything. I'm telling you, my nose is itching. Elbows itching. Who elbows itch out here, right? Listen, and I don't wear makeup, so it's not nothing that I'm using on my skin. I Listen, I'm allergic to this show. Maybe like, you know when you have a ring doorbell and every time there's motion in front of your door, you get a text message and sometimes it just be like a flag blowing or a leaf rolling. And sometimes it's the Amazon man and you don't know, but you got to check either way it goes. That's probably what Big was getting. He was like, notif no, like get notifications that Carrie had said that he was dead again. And he was like, let me go ahead and tell this girl she can go ahead and go. Calling my name all day. <laughs> <laughs> somebody is getting mitzvahed up in here today okay somebody's gonna get up in here and say the stuff and sing the songs i'm gonna murder somebody that's just straight off off top how you gonna call how you gonna have an advice show and don't give no advice girl you got a fashion show with no fashions get out of here camera brand show that's what's going on on one side but then on the other side it's like an amalgamation of mess over there okay it's like thick stringy pieces and like a little semi curl, but a bump on one. Listen, I, did she just get out of a wind tunnel? Okay, I was gonna send them a strongly worded email and tell them that they need to reimburse me for my cable cost for the 10 episodes of this series, for 10 weeks of HBO Max subscription. And I bust out laughing because she looked like a hobbit. She looked like Bilbo Baggins' little sister. Hey everybody, thank you so much for checking out this video. It's your girl LB. Welcome to my channel, Watch With Me LB, where I give you fun, fresh, and funny rants, reviews, and recaps on my favorite movies and TV shows. And we made it, y'all. We did it. I'm proud of y'all. Y'all really am. Y'all have y'all given y'all a little pat on the back? Just a little tap. Just a little quick little tap and pat on the back. I'm very, very proud of y'all. If you're proud of me too, thank you. I'm proud of me as well. That's 10 hours of our lives that we will never get back. You are in London. You could have gone to Paris 19 times. <laughs> Not nah, like you could. You, we never gonna get this 10 hours of our lives back, but I'm glad I went through it with y'all. I'm glad we definitely connected y'all because you know, you need a support system going through, through stuff like this. So let's go ahead and get into this raggedy finale and you know, talk about the raggediness of it all. Okay. So this episode is called Shine the Light, I think. What's it called, child? Let me see. Seeing the light. That's what it's called. It's called seeing the light. So, <laughs> so okay. So the episode starts off with the Raggedy Podcast. Harry works on, and they're talking about ways in which they have gotten broken up with, right? And so immediately, when the first when the dude was like, "I had a girl break up with me. She got COVID, so she could break up with me," and I'm like, "Oh." And then Che, they aggravating self, was like, oh, no, 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 I'll win, right? And so when she, when I realized that they were doing like a competition of who would be the winner of the I've got broken up with the worst competition, that Carrie will win because Burger broke up with her on a post -it note, right? You obviously going to slide that in there. Obvious. It makes perfect sense. You already know we in the multiverse. You already know she's not going to do that. So Che says, well, listen, a girl broke up with me via FaceTime and it was just so nice. I ain't even see it coming. They should have called it two FaceTime. Girl, I'm punching the L right now. We were like two minutes and 42 seconds into the episode and I'm punching the air like, oh, like annoyed about it. Okay. Two FaceTime. You better get on my face. So then we go to Carrie and I'm like, go ahead, lay it on him. Carrie, slap it down on the table like a domino. Carrie said, oh, my husband did. So I win. Girl, it's like, what you, does she want us to give her something for that? Does she want, like, does she work on commission? Like, does she get a commission every time she mentioned that she, that her husband died? Or like, is it, like, was that a part of the will that we didn't get to hear that was read out that she have to mention it a certain amount of times for her to get her money or something? Like, I don't understand. Like, we were made aware. Girl, listen, that girl didn't say nothing about Burger breaking up with her on a post and note. And I was really annoyed by that. Now we cut to Carrie going to her house to get ready for her for her date with Peter, the little teacher man that threw up on her shoes. It appears that the date went well. Once again, they did not let us see the damn date. I don't know what... All right. 
And so, I'm sick of these people. So, <laughs> I'm, tired, I'm tired of these people. They are in front of Carrie's. You know, he's walking Carrie to her door and you know, they have a little kiss or whatever. And you know, it was like a little kiss, child. It wasn't nothing to write home about. I just was like, oh, okay, go ahead, Carrie, you're moving forward. I, I'm surprised you ain't telling me your husband was dead and that you, your lips was out of commission or something, child. I don't know, but. So she immediately called Seema on the phone and I'm like, okay, so she's replacing Miranda and Charlotte with Seema because it seemed like she would have called one of them to tell them about. All right. So she called Seema who was getting her cheeks clapped. Yes, Seema girl. I was very excited for her. Very, very excited. Okay. Somebody's getting laid on this show and I appreciate it. Okay. And I'm glad that it's Seema. Okay. Because she did nothing but the right things the entire season. So I'm glad she was paid off with some yam. Congratulations, Seema. I'm very excited for you. Now, you know what surprised me about that scene? So they were, you know, talking about the date and Carrie said that she kissed the man or whatever. But Seema had a little body, honey. Seema had a little something under there. She had a very cute little shape in her little negligee. I was like, okay, see, you better quit covering up with them long sleeves and long pants, baby. You better give us a little shoulder and take it right back. Now we cut to, you know, Carrie at, the, at her apartment and she's going to bed and she's sitting in her bed and I don't know what she was doing. But then she turned her little nightlight out that's above her bed. I'm having an allergic reaction right now, by the way. My body is like, I'm itching so bad. I don't know what I did. Like my arm, I don't know if you can see it. It's like breaking out right here. I'm breaking out all of my face, behind my ears. It's a mess, but I'm gonna push through, okay? Because I got to get this off my chest. So she's turning her little light out to go to bed, right? She turns her light out and then the thing come right back on. <laughs> and then she's like, and so she turns the light out again and it comes back on. And so I know automatically she's gonna be like, B, is that you? You bad? Cause I kissed that boy, you dead. Boy, I be telling everybody all the time like you told me to in the wheel. Like what more do you want from my life? Leave my lips out of it, God. And so the next day she goes to breakfast with the girls and she's like, listen y'all, Big is here. He living in my lamp, okay? And he turned the lamp on when I turned it off to tell me he was mad that I had went on this date with this man. I'm allergic to this show, y'all, and I'm not even joking. These bastards, they better pay me, they better give me some bit of drill and like charge it to the show, child. I'm not playing with y'all, got me sick out here. Y'all, let me tell y'all something. When Carrie was telling the, the girls at breakfast that B was living in the lamp, okay? They pan the camera around to Miranda and I bust out laughing because she looked like a hobbit. She looked like Bilbo Baggins' little sister. Why did her, oh my scalp is in her too. Why was her, why do they insist on tucking that stiff ass wig behind her ear is the question though. That hair was big and to come out from behind that. And that hair was like, ooh, ooh. Like it was like, I can't stay back here no more. It's like a, it's like a chore for me to stay behind this ear, baby. I don't, I can't make it. I, I'm not gonna be able to do it, okay? That it was like, whoo, I need to come out. I can't stay back. Yo, that wig was terrible, folks. Listen to me. That's, that's what's going on on one side, but then on the other side, it's like an amalgamation of mess over there, okay? It's like thick, stringy pieces and like a little semi curl, but a bump on one. Listen, I, did she just get out of a wind tunnel? And she was like trying to blue. And she was like trying to like get it together for breakfast. Did Che like, her and Che like roll around or roll down a hill in Central Park and she had to like get herself together? Blue, you just gonna burp on my YouTube video? You are Rudy Huxtable, girl. She is so rude. And so Charlotte was like, I don't think Big would send a message from heaven through a lamp to talk to you and tell you he's mad that you went and kissed a man or whatever. And so Miranda's like, heaven? There's no heaven. You know there's no heaven, that's stupid. I don't believe in heaven and you don't either. I thought we were on the same page, blah, blah, blah. And so Carrie's like, well, I changed my mind, bitch. Now if I'm Carrie, I'm thinking, you gonna sit across from me with that dead gerbil on your head and talk to me and judge me because I think my husband is in heaven? Where would you like him to be? What would you like for me to think? Raggedy, 
you know, she takes the lamps to go get the lamp fixed at a lamp repair shop, child. I ain't even know they had lamp repair shops, but apparently they have lamp repair shops. Go off, Carrie. Okay, so while they were at breakfast, Charlie got a text message from the trans rabbi that they will be able to do rocks day mitzvah, all right? And Charlotte was excited because people had been backing out. You know, the rabbi, you know, the traditional rabbis was like, listen, I don't want no parts and whatever y'all got going on is too rich for my blood. I'm gonna go ahead and let somebody else take care of that, right? So they finally got a, a rabbi to do the day, mitz day mitzvah and it seemed like a perfect fit because that rabbi is trans, right? And so they at the house and the rabbi went to go meet with Rock. Baby, that rabbi came out and was like, listen, y'all got a second, I need to talk to y'all. This child don't know nothing that she needs to know for this day mitzvah, nah. What y'all been in here doing? Didn't I say last episode? I say I don't know nothing about a bar mitzvah or a bar mitzvah, but I know you better get on that tour and get it together. I said that and I knew I said it because I knew Rock wasn't in that point. I, I felt it in my soul. The rabbi's like, listen, y'all got some work to do because you trying to have this big blowout and this baby don't know none of her stuff. And Anthony just happened to be there and went and talked to Rock and told them, Hey, your mama said you don't know what was going on. You ain't here playing games and you need to be getting on the tour of what's going on. And, um, you know, the scene that they had with Anthony was very funny. And, you know, he was like, this is not like, you know, there's no understudy that's going to come out and help you to, you know, do this. If you don't do it, it's not like when I had to replace such and such and guys and dolls back in the day. And he was like, he was like, who would have thought a theater group would have been a hotbed for homophobia? And I was <laughs> Baby Anthony was mad, but he did agree. He was funny per usual, right? Shouts out to Anthony. So Anthony was at Charlotte's house because he was giving them some holla to try. That goddamn holla looked good. I ain't gonna lie. It was very golden. And it had the little, you know, the. it's not braided, is it? It's cut, right? Because I knew it had some texture on it. I just thought it was braided and I didn't look at it. But they was like breaking little pieces off. And I was like, damn, that shit look good. I don't know. What, what do you eat with holla? I don't know. Would it be disrespectful if I put it in like the oil with the guts like I do when I go to the Italian restaurant? <laughs> My bad if that's disrespectful. So yeah, so you know, Rock is not into their day mitzvah, even though Charlotte and Harry went all out and you know, whatever. Also, while they were at breakfast, Miranda had mentioned that Che had wanted Miranda to meet their family, right? And so she was excited about it, right? So that's the next thing we get to. We get to Miranda coming down the stairs at this edgy club and her with the little gerbil on her scalp. So she's sitting down at this edgy club. Everybody got on these, all these cute clothes and off the shoulder things and like cool patterns and stuff, baby. She looked like she was about to teach me arithmetic in 1922. She was giving me roaring 20s, conservatively. Che's there and Miranda's like, hey, I thought we was meeting your mama and your daddy and whoever. And he was like, and Che was like, yeah, we all meet my family, they here. So Che got both of her grandmas in the club for something. Right, and Miranda don't know why she there. They don't know why they are there either, the grandmas, right? And so she asked Abuelita, what, what we doing here? She was, Abuelita was like, I don't know. And she asked the other grandma, you know why we in? The other grandma was like, I don't know. Tell me why Che get their ass up on that stage and sing California Girl. You not a girl though, huh? That's what you had told me. You had told me you wasn't a girl and you had told me you wasn't a boy. You told me you don't subscribe to stuff. So that's cool, got got that part. Not that if you non-binary, you can't like the song California Girls, but it just seemed like because this show is so specific in the dumbass shit that they do, that that specific song was a bad choice, is what I'm saying. So I'm, I'm mad at Che, like she a real person, but I'm mad at the writers because I'm punching the air again. I'm, I done punched the air like four times at this point. You understand what I'm saying? And I'm legit having this allergic reaction. Just thinking about how that girl got up, I mean, how that person got up there on that stage and was singing California Girl to tell everybody that she had got, that she was asked to be on a pilot and that she was moving to California. Now, if I'm Miranda, okay, if I'm a 1922 arithmetic teacher and I'm writing on a blackboard, okay, because that's what she looked like. She was about to write on a blackboard, okay. She was about to use an abacus. I would have been pissed. Right, because what you brought me all the way over here to tell me that for? And then Miranda was like, so you had enough time 
to get a band and practice a song and get the club and do all these things. But then you want in, want to tell me. And Che was like, oh, I wanted all the people I love to be in a room when I told them at the same time or whatever. And I'm like, girl, that's a, that's BS. You're not about to uh, pee on me and tell me it's rain. But Che is like, yeah, so I want you to move to LA. And Moran. You want me to come to LA? Do you really want me to come? Oh my God, I'm so Girl, if you don't go your ass back on that prairie, Miranda, I'm telling you, you lucky this is the finale. Cause if you don't, if you ain't had your ass back on that prayer by the by the end of this episode, I was writing the network. Okay, I was gonna send them a strongly worded email and tell them that they need to reimburse me for my cable costs for the ten episodes of this series for ten weeks of HBO Max subscription. So now we back at the the podcast and Che is telling the podcast people that she is um firing the ass because she done decided that she want to go on a pilot and so the the podcast will be no more right and so instead of carrie saying congratulations on your pilot or whatever she was like damn i was just starting to get the hang of this girl you better just go get you your own planet i'm telling you lord have mercy so now she's talking to the little dude from the podcast and she's like oh you know we need to make sure we you know stay in touch or whatever and it's whatever and so he's like yeah but you're coming to my party friday and she's like i ain't get an invitation and so Y'all, by the time this video is over with, I'm gonna be done scratched all my skin off. So, you know, he's like, oh, I forgot to invite you to my party. And Kara's like, oh, okay, don't worry about it. I'm, I'm coming, it's fine. Now we cut to Miranda, who went to Naya's office to tell Naya about the decisions that she made in her life, okay? So Miranda comes in and she said, oh, Naya, girl, how you doing? Um, Just wanted to tell you that all the work that I've been doing in this program and the letter, that I had asked that you write so that I can get into this competitive internship at the Human Rights Watchdog office. I'm gonna throw that in a garbage can so that I can go and be a groupie in Los Angeles. Thank you for your time. Baby, let me tell you something. That I've had that happen before. I've I've invested a lot of time in, a, in my students only for them to make dumb ass decisions. I had a student whose boyfriend was a like an acquaintance of a rapper from New Orleans who got a record deal and was going on tour. So she was going on tour with the boyfriend who was an acquaintance of the rapper that got the record deal. That's like 72 degrees of separation and that baby dropped out of school so she can go ahead and be, I don't even know, I don't even know, I don't know what that baby was about to be. She was about to be, yeah, you got into this competitive internship and you out here about to go be a goofy. Like these people out here wanted that internship and they out here doing the work and here you go. But now he was like, nah, I ain't worried about it. Cause my husband left me, he went on tour. And I don't even know if I like him like that, like talking about it no more. And we gotta see about this baby. That's the last we see a night, y'all. Now I feel played that they gave me this fire ass black woman and just let that be her storyline that she just is whatever that was she was. She didn't add nothing to the story. All she did was just frustrate me along with the 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 habit. I'm talking about Miranda. So now we get to a scene where we with Carrie and her brother-in-law, John's brother, Big's brother, and Big's brother's like, hey, where John at? Um, Carrie, where is he at? And Carrie's like, huh? He said, I said, where is John at? <laughs> and Carrie was like, he, he died. And the dude was like, girl, I know that. Talking about where his ashes at. Now he could have acted in a better way, but I already knew, I knew what he was talking about, obviously, because the man is dead. So anyway, so Carrie was like, I don't know. He in the closet um, by my best pair of shoes. If you knew how, if you really knew me, you would know that that's important to me and my spirit. That man don't know that girl like that. I would have took offense to that. You got my brother in your goddamn closet by your stanky ass shoes. So he was like, you need to go ahead and put him in the family crypt in Connecticut. And Kara was like, yeah, you know, I'ma let me just go ahead and think about it. And the man was like, sis, it's been a year almost, okay? Again, I'm confused about the timeline. So, but I ain't even gonna worry about it because we in the multiverse. What am, I, what am I wasting my brain power for? Okay, I had a long day at work today. I'm not giving these people no more of my brain power. I'ma just tell y'all what happened so we can discuss. We gonna move on, okay? Kara goes to pick up her lamp at the lamp repair store and the man was like yeah it was a bad wire and she was like oh it was a bad wire me if i'm the man i said it was a bad wire <laughs> you at the lamp repair place what you think it's gonna be girl get out of here it's a wire 
Now we cut to Carrie at the dude from the podcast, Jimmy, Jackie, Jackie, at Jackie's party. That's a surprise wedding. And he and his girlfriend get married. And he was wearing matching highlight outfits. She had a bright neon uh, green highlight, the yellow color dress on. And he looked like the highlight factory just exploded on him, child. But they were at the wedding. And the producer from the podcast who I had said was a snack now. Look like they got a little mm, mm, mm happening with he and Carrie. And I'm like, listen, that's what you should have been giving me all season. You should have been building this up all season, okay? Don't give me... Y'all not... Listen, I'm already about to scratch my skin off. And me fussing about what they didn't do is not going to help it. But I can't help it. Why y'all didn't give me this this whole season is the question. That's a fine-ass man. I don't even remember his name. He's fine. Why didn't you give me him? You gave me Peter. Nothing's wrong with Peter. He just a Peter. I don't know what this guy's name is, but he ain't no damn Peter if you catch what I'm saying. It's just a different vibe. They were at the wedding and, you know, Carrie and the little producer man had a little chemistry and they were kind of flirting and he was like, hey, I want to produce you on your own podcast. I love your voice and people call in and you're really good with them. And Carrie's like, hmm, okay. So opportunities always fall in her lap, child. Remember when she was going to be on the cover of the magazine because it just fell in her lap and all that and she looked like a dolphin on the front. Anyway, Carrie is at home and she puts the lamp on and the one she got fixed the one, you know, big house now, you know, being a lamp now. She's having a dream and she's... You know, the dream is like her in Paris and it's the, on a bridge and you hear Big's voice singing the Hello Is Me song. He was singing a specific part. It's important to me that you know you are free, okay? Which is signifying to her that she can be free and she don't have to tell everybody her husband did every five minutes. Cause it was probably getting on big nerves too. Maybe like, you know, when you have a ring doorbell and every time there's motion in front of your door, you get a text message and sometimes it just be like a flag blowing or a leaf rolling. And sometimes it's the Amazon man and you don't know, but you got to check either way it goes. That's probably what Big was getting. He was like, notif no like get notifications that Carrie had said that he was dead again. And he was like, let me go ahead and tell this girl she can go ahead and go. Shit, calling my name all day. <laughs> Wouldn't that be funny if like having had like push notifications? That would be funny. So now we go to the day mitzvah, which is beautiful. So, you know, you know, nah, if you know if Charlotte going to do something, it's going to be together okay they have beautiful rainbow color flowers and a rainbow color candy display and a chairs are rainbow and everybody got on beautiful bright colors and lisa ty wexley is there and carrie you know whatever also carrie has not worn a tight ass bun in her head the entire episode very loose and flowy okay i was very excited about it now charlotte on the other hand was giving me this, like the big puffy drumstick sleeves again and i'm not i'm not a fan of it we have the day mitzvah and it's beautiful everybody's waiting and rock decides that they don't want to participate in the day mitzvah because they don't want no labels at all they don't want to be a boy or a girl or non-binary or jewish or christian or new yorker they don't want no labels at all and so charlotte freaks out and she's very upset you know and she goes to lisa ty wexley and she's crying right so cut to still at the same, at the day of mitzvah, right? We see Carrie and Miranda, and Miranda is dropping the news to Carrie that she's going to go to LA to be with Che to tape their pilot. So Carrie's reaction, she was trying to hold back that judgment, child. I'm not that kind of friend though, because again, I have questions. You're gonna know that I need to know as your friend. What the hell you doing, okay? Because you're not practicing law anymore. Now you're dropping out of school, okay? If you were anybody else, we would need to have a conversation because one, where's your money coming from? Hmm? Where's your income coming in at? How you, how you affording all this? Are you dealing drugs? Have you shaved your head and sold your hair? Are you like in some experimental treatments and that's why you gotta wear a wig like i don't understand where your money's coming from and the decisions that you're making and carrie's like listen sis i'm not judging you i just don't understand what you're doing with yourself okay and miranda's like that sounds like judgment to me i can change if i want to change i don't have to live by rigid rules and you know or whatever and they got into this conversation. And, I'm sorry, y'all. I've been jangling this whole episode. Huh? I mean, this whole video. I'm sorry. 
So they got into this conversation initially because Carrie told Charlotte and Miranda that she decided she wants to scatter Big's ashes in the off the you know in the water in the I think that's the the Tim. She wants to scatter Big's ashes off of you know by their bridge right in Paris. And so you know they were like, listen, Carrie was like, listen, let's make a weekend out of it. My treat because I'm rich because my husband is dead. Don't forget it. Let's go to Paris three day weekend in and out. Okay. And so Charlotte's like, let sh, sh, yo, huh? Yeah, girl, I'ma go because Rock get on my nerves any damn way. I'm coming. And Miranda's like, well, I gotta check my dates, but I should be able to be there. And so now they're having a, a conversation, just the two of them, Carrie and Miranda, about Miranda's dumbass decision. And Carrie is questioning why the hell are you gonna go and just be in the same city as a person that's gonna be working 12 to 15 hours a day. Hmm? So what you gonna do when she taping? Carrie was like, you just gonna sit in the audience and laugh? You dummy. And Miranda's like, am I not allowed to change? Am I not allowed to change again and change back if I wanted to? Why do I have to live by rigid rules that I've lived by my whole life? And I have to do what I want to do because I'm a dumbass and I really want to do it. And I'm a groovy and I love change and I'm stupid. Okay, Carrie? Whatever, girl. Whatever, though. Mm, mm, mm. So they're in the bathroom having this conversation and the rabbi, you know, the, the one that's supposed to be doing rocks, the mitzvah comes out the bathroom and she's like, listen, I was in there peeing and I heard y'all whole conversation. So I'm gonna just give you my two cents before I go ahead and um, leave. I want y'all to be friends. Go ahead and make up, do what you want to do, whatever, whatever. And I'm like, girl, mind your business, child. Like, first of all, if I saw that person, I would never assume that they were a rabbi. I don't, I I just have um, Rabbi Jeanette on a, a, a body kind dress. And I was like, girl, can't rabbis wear body kind dresses? I had questions, okay? I wasn't mad at it, I just, so, Charlotte goes in and says to Rock, you know, Rock is in the back and Rock is like, I'm not doing this. I don't want to do no day mitzvah. I know you spent $130,000 and I'm going to wait till it's like week 20 minutes past when I was supposed to start the, the, the thing, but I'm going to just let you know I don't want to do it. And Charlotte was like, you know what? I'm sick of your ass. Somebody is getting mitzvahed up in here today. Okay. Somebody's going to get up in here and say the stuff and sing the songs. I'm going to murder somebody. That's just straight off off top. I'm not an old school parent per se. I think a lot of the ways in which parents disciplined their kids back in the day um, were useful. A lot of them were trash though, right? So I just pull the ones that I think are useful. And one of the ones that I pull from back in the day that I feel are useful is you do it because I said so. Like, like I'm not gonna tell you to do something that's gonna harm you. Cool, you don't wanna, you don't wanna date mitzvah. You should have told my ass that if I ordered 175,000 dollars worth of rainbow flowers because you said you wanted a date mitzvah. You gonna mitzvah your ass up on this thing now? That's just me, okay? I had to do a bunch of stuff I didn't want to do, but my mama told me to do it, so I did it. Let me know where you fall on the spectrum. Would you have made Rock get up there and date mitzvah, or would you have said? I'ma go ahead and they mitz for my own self. You know, Charlotte was very proud because she had been studying with Rock and reciting the Torah and the songs and the, you know, all the things. And so she just went ahead and did it. You know, Rabbi Jim was like, if you know, if anybody wants to come up on a on a stage and and like, I don't remember if it was like congratulating Charlotte or like being on the stage for that part of the blessing, go ahead and go up there. And so Lily went and Harry went and then Rock got their ass up there and went too. And I'm like, nah, you ain't coming on my stage. No, you're not. Sit your ass down in them chairs. You ain't wanna be a part of nothing. You don't wanna be having no labels and you don't want, I ain't cool. You ain't gonna be a part of mine. That's just me. I don't know if that's, I, listen, I don't know. That's just what I would've said. Have a seat. Cause I done bought you this custom made pink suit that you wearing, that you asked for, and now you gonna get up here. Nah, you ain't getting up on, you ain't taking my, nope, not today. So now y'all, this is what, this is the thing. This next scene is the thing, y'all. Okay, so, Miranda getting ready to go to LA cause she's stupid. And Brady getting ready to go backpack across Europe and I hope he like gets stuck in a mountain and like the, the mountain people just feed him, you know, food to just keep him alive but that he just gets stuck there for all eternity. But Miranda has dyed her hair back to the red that we knew Miranda to, to be. And when I tell you she looks 733 years younger than she looked when she had that gerbil on her head, why did y'all wait? until the last episode of the only season of this show because we know it ain't coming back and if it come back sarah jessica got something on somebody over there at hbo i'm just gonna say it like that's just gonna be what it is 
Sarah Jessica has some dirt on somebody over there in the higher ups at HBO if this show comes back. You're not gonna convince me otherwise. Miranda has dyed her hair back to red and looks like a normal person instead of somebody who has escaped from some sort of institution. And, you know, she's on her way to the airport five hours early because, you know, that's normal Miranda in the normal universe that I know would get there super fucking early just because, right? But they giving us real time, you know, this planet Earth Miranda with two minutes left in the episode and I'm punching the F. How dare you, HBO? How dare you do that to us? Okay, it's very disrespectful, right? Now we cut to Carrie and she's on a bridge in New York and she's got this fantastic, you know, gown on. And, you know, I don't know if it was fantastic because I don't really remember what it looked like. I know it was big. I mean, fantastic in the size of it. Okay, she's dragging it all on the ground. Probably cost $145,000. I don't, whatever child. So she has this bag and she's keeping his ashes in a bag shaped like the Eiffel Tower. And she dumps them in the water but the way she dumped them was weird to me she was like and most people when it's like a sentimental moment because she was getting choked up prior to her dumping the ashes would have just gently placed them in the water you know like just you know just dump them out care was like get your fucking ass in this water because like what was she mad like i don't know like i don't she just did it weird so carrie threw the man ashes in the water and then she texts samantha hey, I'm in London, you wanna get a cocktail? And then, you know, they were like, yeah, we're gonna get up tomorrow or whatever, or we're gonna talk soon or something, child. And I was like, leave Samantha out of this, bro. Samantha is tired. If she wanted to talk to you, she would have called you, baby. The phone works two ways, huh? Last scene of the show, Carrie is in the studio and she's doing a podcast and this girl is calling up and she's like, I don't know what happened. And, he broke up with me and I don't understand why and you know, what do I do and whatever, right? So Carrie then tells the girl that she don't know what to do. The girl called into her advice show to get advice and then Carrie say, I don't have no advice. I'm punching the air, I'm telling you now. What you mean you don't have no advice? It's an advice show. Girl, so the producer man, you know, the cute one, the fine one that we should have been watching this whole season is walking Carrie to the elevator and they, you know, talking about how good the show was and you did a great job and it's only going to get better and he's being encouraging to Carrie even though she didn't give the girl no advice on the advice show. How you going to call? How you going to have an advice show and don't give no advice? Girl, you got a fashion show with no fashions. Get out of here, Carrie Bradshaw. They walk into the elevator and they, you know, get in the elevator and they start making out. And I'm so aggravated because that would have been a show. Do you hear me? Big ass is gone. Cool, cool. Now you got a fine little young thing with a little salt and pepper that's all up in your, all up in, all up in your, your whatnot. I'm, listen, I'm getting older. Salt and pepper is my jam. Do you hear me? Don't have a little salt and pepper in your hair. Okay. That's my, listen. Hoo hoo, baby. So that was it. That's it. I'm telling you, was it, it wasn't, it's supposed to be like a roller coaster. You know, like you go down and you're coasting up and you're getting excited because you know that dip about to come. The dip is supposed to be the finale. The dip coming, the dip coming. It's like we got stuck on top of the roller coaster, child. It's like we got all the way to the end. Mind you, did nothing good happen on this way, on the way up in this episode. But that's how it's supposed to be in a normal show that's in this multiverse. So we got all the way up here and we was confused about what was happening on the ride up. And we was like, okay, well, maybe it's gonna get better. And then we get to the tip, tip, tippy top and they cut the damn power off. They cut the power off to the roller coaster, turn all the lights off in the amusement park, got in their car and went home. That's what this finale was like. They didn't gave my allergic reaction. Look at my face. Hmm, look at my face. Look at my, look at my face. All red. It did not start until the episode finished, folks. Run me some Benadryl, HBO Max. I'm not joking. Sarah Jessica, get me some Benadryl, honey. Liquid and cream. Miranda, you get the pills with your raggedy self. Okay, girl. Y'all, we did it. Okay, let me know what y'all thought about the episode. I'm gonna give this episode a negative star because you wasted my time. And I feel like I'm never gonna get it back and you need to do better. This is a premium subscription. Okay, this is not basic cable. 
Why would you let Miranda dye her hair in the season finale? Why would you give me normal behavior from these weird characters you've been having me watch for 10 episodes in the finale, knowing good and well you're not picking this show up for a second season? Huh? Tell me why. Make me understand. Decode that thing for me. Hmm? Y'all should see my leg is sticking straight out. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate y'all coming on this ride with me. I appreciate y'all communicating with me. I'm so sorry I've been out of, you know, the loop reading. Life done came and like knocked me down. I still have a bunch of stuff I need to post to the channel. I'm still editing, but I'm getting it out there. Thank y'all for rocking with me. Bye.